Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin in spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free, free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And And also also with you. you. Blessed are you, God of Jacob, for you promised to transform weapons of war into implements of planting and harvest and to teach us your way of peace. You promised that our night of sin is far gone and that your day of salvation is dawning. As we light the first candle on this wreath, wake us from our sleep, wrap us in your light, empower us to live honorably and guide us along your path of peace. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in In the light light of the Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. This lament comes from a people who have had their hopes shattered, the visions of a rebuilt Jerusalem, and a renewed people of God, spoken of in Isaiah 40 through 55, have not been realized. Instead, the people experience ruin, conflict, and famine. This lament calls God to account, to be the God who has brought deliverance in the past. 
A reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you and your ways. But you are angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inequities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name, or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine for you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the duration of our labors. And And our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the The one one you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Our second reading comes from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. As the Christians in Corinth await the advent of Jesus, Paul reminds them of how the Lord has already enriched them through spiritual gifts and will continue to strengthen them until the coming day of the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, 
so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for today is from the Gospel of Mark, the 13th chapter. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Beloved of God, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, with Christians around the world, we step into the season of Advent. In the Northern Hemisphere where we live, Advent and the whole church year begins in the shortest, darkest days of the year. It's actually one of the things I appreciate about Advent. The growing darkness lends itself to the contemplative practices that I associate with this season, like candle lighting, daily devotions, the conscious marking of time. These quiet practices invite me deep into the story of Christ's coming. Which is why the Gospel text on this first Sunday of Advent always catches me a little off guard. The church year doesn't begin quietly but with a grand, dramatic vision. The 13th chapter of Mark's Gospel, the coming of Christ is depicted as a cosmic event with repercussions for all creation. Sun, moon, stars, four winds, angels, they all get in on the action in today's text. When Christ comes to bring God's redemption finally and fully, everything in heaven and earth will be involved. I would expect this bold proclamation to be accompanied by trumpets and fireworks. And yet here we are, lighting our one little candle. The flame flickers among the shadows of uncertainty and vulnerability and the fear that so many feel right now at this particular moment in history. This gospel text was written for people in the grip of fear and uncertainty people who were mourning their losses. You may be aware that Mark's Gospel was written shortly after the temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed by the Roman army. That bright, sparkling complex of buildings on the hill had been the center of Jewish life and community, a place where people gathered to live the rhythm and rituals of their faith together. It was a symbol of hope and of God's presence with the people. And it was gone 
just like that. The community scattered, hither and yon. Jews and even some Gentiles in Jerusalem, for them, life as they knew it was forever altered by a random, cruel act of history. This event sent shockwaves through the community of Jesus' followers. They were expecting his triumphant return and got the Roman army instead. The Gospels were written for people who needed to hear the promises of God once again. The promise that the future does not belong to the Roman Empire. It doesn't belong to any empire that is built on the backs of many for the benefit of few. The future belongs to God, the God of love and justice, the God of liberation and salvation, the God who humbles the mighty and exalts the lowly. The Gospels were written by people who had experienced this God, who had seen this promised future breaking into the world in the person and ministry of Jesus. In the face of great upset and turmoil, they had good news to share. God is faithful, and God is doing a new thing. Hold fast to Christ. Keep awake to his promises. Do not lose heart. This good news sustained the early Christian community. Like the flame of a candle, these promises were passed from one generation to the next. They were a source of courage and hope for people of faith, as they are for us today. The experience of our ancestors may seem particularly poignant to us this year, as many of the structures and rhythms of our life together have been shaken and altered by a historic event. I know there are many of you who feel scattered this season, cut off from each other, unable to gather in the familiar ways that Christian communities gather during Advent and Christmas. I've heard the word apocalyptic tossed around quite a bit describing 2020, and it may be a fitting word. Apocalypse means unveiling or revealing. This year of pandemic has revealed many difficult truths. We have seen how vulnerable we are in the face of a microscopic invader. I can't believe something so tiny can wreak such havoc. We've seen how stubborn injustices result in unequal care and protection. We've seen with new eyes the broken places in our economic system and our government. As people who follow Jesus' example of justice and love, we have our work cut out for us, for sure. The Christian faith does not deny this reality. We don't dress it up in tinsel and bows and pretend that things are easy and beautiful and happy all the time. We tell the truth about suffering and injustice. But like our ancestors, we lean into the promise that suffering takes place within a larger reality. The Christian story is a story of a love so resilient and strong, so tender and true, that it holds us through all of the storms of life. In Advent, we tell the story of a God who reaches through time and space to enter our messy, unpredictable lives to bring us the gift of redemption. Redemption is not necessarily a comfortable thing. According to John the Baptist, that Advent herald who will show up in the Sundays to come, it involves repentance, which is a type of apocalyptic experience. It involves seeing things that we might not want to see about ourselves, telling truths that are hard to admit. In Advent, we hear the call to wake up, to open our eyes, to be alert to God's presence and power in our lives, and to keep awake to God's promises. You see, our faith is rooted in an audacious promise that God is alive and active, and that as God created this world in love, God continues to redeem and sustain this world in love. As Christians, we trust the promise that joined to Christ Jesus in baptism, we are joined to him in all circumstances of life, welcome and unwelcome. Whatever lies ahead for us, 
for history, for creation itself, he will be present to gather us into God's love and into God's eternal life. Whatever the future brings, it is held by God in Christ. This is the big, bold promise of our faith. And it is the foundation of our hope. Christian hope is not a mood or an attitude. It is not the result of a well-ordered life or a perpetually cheerful temperament. Hope, as Anne Lamott, the author, writes, hope begins in darkness. Christian hope was born in an empty tomb among disappointed, heartbroken people shaken to their core. And yet they learned that where everything seems like death, God is working life. They learned that with God, nothing is impossible. It is this same hope that is reborn in us this season. It arrives with other gifts like peace and joy and love. These gifts flow straight from the heart of God to us. We do nothing to earn them. They are gifts of divine grace. We receive these gifts with open hands and strive to share them with a world in need. And together, we wait on the promise that one day, in the fullness of time, redemption will not only dawn, but will rise like the sun, and the whole creation will be gathered into God, healed and whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me as we recite the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join me in prayer. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing, those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same, how that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name, oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, 
Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and this cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours. Holy One of Israel, word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, all are invited, all are invited to come and receive the body and blood, the bread and wine of Jesus. All are welcome. Come, eat, and drink. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, Assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound and imprisoned. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.